Hello students, welcome to today's episode. In this episode, we will discuss about CAPM which is Capital Asset Pricing Model and APT that is Arbitrage Pricing Theory. I am Dr. Arshia Hussain, PhD in Human Resource Management and teaching in the Department of Commerce and Business Studies, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. So we will start with the concept of Capital Asset Pricing Model which is known as CAPM. The capital asset pricing model was developed by William F. Sharp and John Linter. CAPM explains the behavior of security prices and provides a mechanism whereby investors could assess the impact of a proposed security investment on the overall portfolio risk and return. It attempts to measure the risk of a security in the portfolio sense. CAPM refers to the way in which securities are valued in line with their anticipated risk and return. A risk averse investor prefers to invest in risk free securities. A small investor having few securities in his portfolio have a greater risk. In order to reduce the unsystematic risk, he must have a well diversified securities in his portfolio. This will bring the diversified and balanced portfolio of all securities of an investor's systematic risk to the level of average systematic risk in the stock market as a whole. Capital asset pricing model asserts that risky portfolio does not pay more than the safe one. The systematic risk of the two portfolios remain the same. To the rational investors, it makes no difference that the stocks in one portfolio are individually riskier than other stocks. Because successive stock price changes are identically distributed, independent of random variables. An individual is assumed to rank alternatives in his order of preference. CAPM considers the required rate of return of a security on the basis of its contribution to total portfolio risk. In fact, the CAPM can be used to examine the risk and return of any type of asset or investment. CAPM is now being discussed here with reference to risk and return of a security only. Now we will discuss about the assumptions of CAPM. The capital asset pricing model is based upon the following assumptions. The first assumption is the investors are generally risk averse and diversification is needed to reduce the risk. Second assumption is all investors want to maximize the wealth and therefore selects a portfolio on the basis of risk and return analysis. The third assumption is all investors can borrow or lend without a limit at risk free rate of interest. The fourth assumption is all investors have identical expectations of risk and return of all securities. 
fifth one all securities are perfectly divisible and liquid and there is no transaction cost or tax sixth assumption is the security market is efficient and purchases and sales by a single investor cannot affect the prices this also means that there is a perfect competition in the market the seventh assumption is all investors are efficiently diversified and have eliminated the unsystematic risk. Thus, only the systematic risk is relevant in determining the estimated return. Now we'll see what the model has to say. CAPM attempts to explain and provide the mechanism whereby investors can assess the impact of a proposed security on their portfolio's risk and return. The total risk of a portfolio can be bifurcated into systematic and unsystematic risk. The unsystematic risk is eliminated by more and more diversification. On the other hand, the systematic risk is one which cannot be eliminated and is correlated with that of the market portfolio. A portfolio is efficient if there is no unsystematic risk. Therefore, the only effect of a security has on the portfolio risk is through its systematic risk. The risk of a diversified portfolio depends upon the systematic risks of the securities included in the portfolio. An investor, therefore, will be entrusted to know the effect which each security will have on the risk of his portfolio. All the securities available to an investor do not have the same level of systematic risk. The factors contributing to systematic risk do not affect all the securities in the same way. The magnitude of the influence of these factor vary from one security to another depending upon the sensitivity of the security to the market fluctuations. The investor will pay premium only for the systematic risk as it is non-diversifiable. The systematic risk differs from one security to another. And its measurement is important in selecting the securities of desired risk return characteristics. Systematic risk can be measured in terms of 13 factor. The CAPM can be expressed as follows. The risk free interest rate RM which is equal to the expected return on market portfolio. 3 is equal to the beta factor a measure of systematic risk of the security or asset. The portfolio that contains all the securities in the economy is called the market portfolio which plays a crucial role in CAPM. The CAPM model depicts that the expected rate of return of a security consists of two parts namely the first one, the risk free interest rate that is RF and second, the risk premium that is RM minus IRF 13. Now, the risk premium is equal to the difference between the expected market return and the risk free interest rate multiplied by the beta factor. It is important here to mention that the risk premium varies directly with the beta factor that is the systematic risk and therefore the value of R depends upon the beta factor 13. The higher the beta factor the greater is the expected rate of return R and vice versa. Now according to CAPM the expected return for a particular security depends on three factors. The first factor is the pure time value of money. Second factor, the reward for bearing systematic risk. And the third one is the amount of systematic risk. In CAPM, 13 is the measure of volatility of systematic risk of a security in the portfolio. It measures how sensitive the price of a security is to the market movements. 
It measures the security's marginal contribution to the risk of the market portfolio. Again, it is important to mention here that the securities whose beta factor is greater than 1 will tend to amplify the overall movement of market rate of return and the securities whose beta factor is less than 1 will tend to move in the same direction as the market. Now, since the market consists of all the securities and is a portfolio of all securities, then an average security will have a beta factor of 1 only. CAPM helps establishing the relationship between the risk and return. The underlying basic postulate is that the securities or the assets with the same risk should have the same expected rate of return. So, the price of securities in the capital market should adjust until equivalent risk securities have identical expected return. For example, there is an investor, say A, holding a risky portfolio with the same market risk as the market portfolio has. That is, the beta factor is equal to 1. Now, what are the expectations? of an investor in terms of a return. See, as per CAPM, the investor should expect the same return as the market portfolio. Now, suppose there is another investor B who holds a risk less portfolio that is beta factor is equal to 0. The investor B should expect to earn the rate of return on the riskless securities that is the government bonds. Now, by taking no risk, he earns the riskless rate of return. Now, there is another investor, say C, who holds a mixture of risky investment and riskless investments. Assuming he invests a proportion of X of his money in risky investments and the remaining, that is 1 minus X in riskless investments. Now, what is his risk and return from the investment. As we know that the beta factor of the market portfolio is 1 and that of the risk-free investment is 0. Therefore, the beta factor of the portfolio of investors C may be defined as thus the formula for calculating beta is the covariance of the return of an asset with the return of the benchmark divided by the variance of the return of the benchmark over a certain period. Thus, x is equal to the proportion of his money invested in risky investments. If 100% or less of the investor's funds are invested in risky investment, then his beta factor 13 will be between 0 and 1. The basic equation of CAPM therefore says that the expected return of a portfolio should exceed the risk-free rate of return by an amount that is proportional to the beta factor of the investor. That is, the relationship between risk and return should be linear. Now, we will discuss CAPM and valuation of investments. CAPM can be used to find out the minimum required rate of return of the investors and thereby can also be used for valuation of securities. The value of R as given by the CAPM equation is the minimum required rate of return which a security must offer otherwise the investor may not like to invest in that security. R in fact is equal to the K or KD or KE of different securities. The value of R then can be used to value the security by choosing an appropriate valuation model. The R shows the rate of discount for discounting the future cash flows for different valuation models. Now, we will discuss security market line also known as SML. The CAPM model as represented by the equation is basically that of a straight line. 
The CAPM when plotted on a graph paper gives a straight line as depicted in the figure shown. In other words, the graphical version of CAPM is also called the security market line that is SML. Now the SML represents the relationship between the beta factor and the expected rate of return of a security. The SML is an upward sloping straight line with an intercept at the risk free return securities and passes through the market portfolio. In equilibrium, each security or portfolio lies on the SML that is security market line. The figure shows that the return expected from portfolio or investment is a combination of risk free return plus risk premium. Now an investor will come forward to take risk only if the return on investment also includes risk premium. CAPM provides an intuitive approach for thinking about the return that an investor should require on an investment given the assets systematic or market risk. CAPM shows the risk and return relationship of an investment in the following formula. E is equal to R1 which is equal to Rf plus beta i into Rm minus Rf where E R1 is equal to the expected rate of return on any individual security. Rf is equal to risk free rate of return. Rm is equal to expected rate of return on the market portfolio. Rm minus Rf is equal to risk premium. Beta i is equal to market sensitivity index of individual security. Now we will have a look at one illustration. Alpha Limited. An investment company has invested in equity shares of a Delta Limited company. Its risk free return that is RF is equal to 10 percent. Expected total return which is RM is equal to 16 percent. Market sensitivity index that is beta I is equal to 1.50. Calculate the expected rate of return on the investment made in the security. Now we will have a look at the solution. See the total expected return that is Rm is given to us as 16 percent. Risk free return that is Rf is equal to 10 percent. Risk premium that is Rm minus Rf is equal to 6 percent. Thus Eri which is equal to Rf plus beta i that is Rm minus Rf which is equal to 10 plus 1.50 thus 16 minus 10 is equal to 19 percent. Now we will see the location and slope of the security market line. In the figure shown the SML1 is an existing security market line. However, if the risk free rate increases from RF1 to RF2, then the position of the security market line is also shifted upward from SML1 to SML2. Now, this is part A. Similarly, the slope of the line also changes as shown in part B from SML1 to SML2. If there is a change in the risk factor and the consequent effect on the required rate of return of 22 percent. So, the slope of the line is 12 percent divided by 1.8 which is equal to 6.67 percent. 
The slope of the line is also called the reward to risk ratio and can be found as follows. Suppose this reward to risk ratio has been calculated for security A. Similarly, for security B, the ratio has been calculated to be 7.5 percent. Now, this situation where different securities have different reward to risk ratio cannot persist because investors would be attracted towards security B away from security A. As a result, price of B will increase and that of A will fall because prices and return move in opposite directions. Now, B's expected return would decline and A's expected return would rise. The buying and selling would continue until the two assets offer exactly same reward to risk ratio. So, in a competitive market, the fundamental risk return relationship would be, in other words, the reward to return ratio must be same for all the assets in the market. The SML can be discussed in terms of its intercept, that is the risk free rate of return and the change in required rate of return as a result of change in the beta factor. Therefore, the location of a SML depends upon these two variables. If there is a change in any of these two variables, then the SML will take in new shape. Thus, the basic difference between capital market line and security market line is the measure of the risk. The CML measures the total risk of a portfolio and is measured in terms of a. On the other hand, the SML is concerned only with the systematic risk of a security as measured by the beta factor 30. All the portfolios lying on the CML are the efficient portfolios and the inefficient portfolios lie below the CML. However, the SML shows only those securities which are correctly priced in view of the systematic risk associated with the security. Now, we will discuss limitations of CAPM. CAPM suffers from the following problems or limitations. The first one is the calculation of beta factor is very tedious as lot of data is required. The beta factor can be found by examining the securities historical returns relative to the return of the market portfolio. Further, the beta factor may or may not reflect the future variability of returns. The beta factor cannot be expected to be constant over time. It must be updated frequently. Second limitation is the assumptions of the CAPM are hypothetical and are impractical. In other words, in real world assumptions of CAPM will not hold good. For instance, the assumption of borrowing and lending at the same rate is imaginary because in practice, the borrowing rates are higher than the lending rates. The third limitation is CAPM is a single period model. While most projects are often available only as large indivisible projects, it is therefore more difficult to adjust. Now, we will discuss another concept which is arbitrage pricing theory. Arbitrage pricing theory was developed by Stephen Ross as an alternative risk return model. 
beyond the factor model such as CAPM. Arbitrage pricing theory is a reasonably intuitive model which requires only limited assumptions and allows for multiple risk factors. The arbitrage pricing theory that is APT does not require the following assumptions. First of all, the utility functions of investors are quadratic, security returns are normally distributed, the market portfolio that contains all risky assets is mean variance efficient. The APT only assumes that the capital markets are perfectly competitive and that investors always prefer more wealth to less wealth with certainty. APT in finance is a general theory of asset pricing that has become influential in the pricing of shares. APT holds that the expected return of a financial asset can be modeled as a linear function of various macroeconomic factors or theoretical market indices where sensitivity to changes in each factor is represented by a factor a specific beta coefficient. The model derived rate of return will then be used to price the asset correctly. APT looks very similar to the CAPM, but its origin are significantly different. Whereas the CAPM is a single factor model, the APT is a multi factor model instead of just a single beta value. There is a whole set of beta values, one for each factor. APT states that the expected return on an investment is dependent upon how that investment reacts to a set of individual macroeconomic factors. That is the degree of reaction being measured by the betas. And the risk premium associated with each of those macroeconomic factors. The APT holds that there are four factors which explain the risk or risk premium relationship of a particular security. Basically, CAPM says that ERI is equal to RF plus lambda beta I where lambda is the average risk premium which is equal to RM minus RF. However, APT holds that ERI is equal to RF plus lambda 1 beta I1 plus lambda 2 beta I2 plus lambda 3 beta I3 plus lambda 4 beta I4 where lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 and lambda 4 are the average risk premium for each of the four factors in the model and beta I1, beta I2, beta I3 and beta I4 are measures of the sensitivity of the particular security I to each of the four factors. The factors that have been identified as important are first one changes in the level of industrial production. Second one, changes in the shape of the yield curve. Third one, changes in the default risk premium. Next, changes in the inflation rate. Next, changes in the real interest rate. Next, level of personal consumption. Next, level of money supply in the economy. So that is all for today. Hope you have understood the concept of CAPM and arbitrage pricing theory. We'll meet in the next episode with a new topic. Till then, take care. Goodbye.